you can divide it into a number of stages, but we've chosen four as sort of uh, roughly, roughly right. The first stage is is uh, problem definition phase, where you're trying to really understand what the problem is. Uh, you're trying to articulate to yourself and with your teammates exactly what is the problem that you're trying to solve, and this didn't strike me as being one of the really important phases, but seeing the way my students experienced that yesterday, they were coming up with different comments and you could really see that uh, they don't really appreciate what the problem is yet. And it's the importance of that, that design phase is that you've got, to, you've got to really understand what the problem is before you can go and try to solve it. Because if you go and try and solve it before you understand what the problem is, you'll be solving the wrong thing. We want to test our, 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 our device firstly, before, before yeah. the, I think the that's operation. that's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's probably a really good idea to get it ready a couple of weeks before the test so you can check whether it works. And there are so many different things you have to take into account that like you just yeah. don't realise like how much work you have to do until you actually think about it all and you're like, wow, I have to take into consideration all these things that you didn't actually think were relevant, but they are, surprisingly. We sort of got a clear idea of how much we were expected to put in ourselves. Like, so understood that they're not going to tell us everything. We have to figure it out, and we need to put in our own time. And we've got some ideas kicking around. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. yeah longer than expected. I'm like, yeah, this is going to take yeah. like half an hour, hour or so. And two hours later, we sort of were pushing to get it finished. The problem is everyone has their own opinions about how to say it. <laughs> we did it individually. They came together, and we did it together. And then then we scrapped it all and did it again together. And I think that was sort of really good. Good to show refinement, and, it, and the refinement worked really well. They see the concept of design the same way a blind person might understand colours. They really have no framework within which to understand what solving an open-ended problem is all about. So we keep saying the process of design, but they have no idea what we're talking about mm. until they can gain some experience, and then they can have a chance to reflect on it, and then you know, have some more experiences to, um, to test their understanding. <laughs> In research, of course, we use notebooks all the time to, to document our results and our thought processes and so forth. And um, it's a very valuable uh, tool for uh, like historical record keeping, um, for process development. When you have to share your results with other people, you have everything stored in one place. The design notebook is a, method, a tool that the students use to record their activities. So they take it along <clears throat> and they put all their notes in it and drawings and so forth. And they'll read the textbook. They'll come to lecture, hopefully. They'll listen to us, and then they'll be asked to go do some individual preparation prior to coming to a team meeting. So they'll do the first activities, and they'll do all these things. They'll come to the meeting, and as a group, they'll do something to finalize that. And then they're asked to go away and individually write the reflections on this in relation to uh, the content, uh, the context, and what they've learned about it. That then becomes the ability for them to stop and think, okay, what happened? And how does that relate to me? And how does that relate to me as a team member? And, and um, uh, how could I apply this in the future? And so we can really uh, work with that aspect and direct their learning towards a more meaningful or at least more substantial aspects of design and hopefully retain that process. It kind of makes sure that you've understood what you've read as well. I mean, the textbook, is, I found it really good. And then you do the design notebook and you have to really apply what you've read, which doesn't always work out because you don't always have the data, but it, it is a good idea in general to keep you on task the same way in a, in a maths um, course you'll have quizzes every week or something like that. It just keeps you on track. I recognised right away that that was going to be very important to this course because it's a way of, of the students having a place to work and then, almost more importantly, um, something that they can reflect on later in this course, later in their careers, and also later in their life. I mean, I think it's going to be a wonderful thing for them in a few years' time after they graduate to look back through the pages of their design notebook and see what they were doing. In the yeah, what are you going to, what kind of material are you going to use for your chassis? Each week or every two weeks, they'll do an exercise or two in their notebooks to help define the problem, to help develop the creative solutions, to help decide which solutions are the best and not the, and not the best. Basically, it is the, the vessel in which everything that we do in this course is, is, is stored. This is what I'm looking for, everybody, today. You see this? Sketches and, and noodles and doodles and everything. I want to see at least 50 or 100 of these in every lab notebook, OK? Everything. Just get, get everything you can think of on paper. With the tasks, it might perhaps be better if 
it's not like there's the one due date and you do it that day. If it was all open ended and you had final dates for each thing, because you know when you're going through that, that would alleviate the problem of you know when you go, oh we've already done this now we do the notebook activity on it. You know so if it was, you know if it was meant to be assessed as you periodically go along and do each component of the process, then you know it might actually have it might bear more relevance, I guess. The learning portfolio is, uh, uh, is in relation to this notion of, uh, of a reflective uh, skills in, in developing concepts of uh, problem solving uh, strategies or planning to solve problems in engineering, particularly in open-ended problems. If you experience something and you get a result, as an engineer what you want to do is stand back and think about, all right, well, what did I do? Uh, what result did I get? Now what do I do now in order to get a better result or to reduce the amount of time I spent at getting a really good result which could have been done easier. So it's a, it's a, it's a planning uh, feedback problem. What we're trying to do is we're trying to point out and to get the students to focus on these thinking skills or reflective skills about what happened in relation to what was supposed to happen so that the, the process of solving a problem becomes clear. There is a systematic decision-making approach to solving these problems, and it's fairly clear, but if you don't think about what you're doing post having done it, then you don't reinforce the, and this is true for any other subject you're learning, you don't reinforce the model in your head about how to do it. So this is a tool, this, re this learning portfolio is a, is a tool to help structure your thinking about how to solve these problems and hope to retain more about the problem-solving method. Well, the most useful part of it is, of course, the reflection part because that's the bit where you get asked specific interesting questions that haven't been done um, already in the design notebook usually. Um, or you're evaluating the processes that you did in class. You feel as if you're almost constructing answers, you're doing it to get a specific answer that you've already decided and it seems a tad forced and unnecessary at times. In some ways it's good but it usually is just a formalised kind of reworking of what you've already done in the design notebook tasks. So it's probably most useful to the people who aren't doing the design notebooks tasks very well. I guess it was sort of good to keep track of where you were going, where your group was going, and uh, yeah, reflect on those things that you had, had learned in the course. I guess especially like sort of preparation for other courses we're going to do and for actual design, I guess it was yeah. kind of relevant because like that is what you're going to have to do in the future, reflect on what you have done, and like always have that reflecting stage. So I think in that way it was a pretty useful tool. One of the interesting things is that doing these design projects, they begin to think in the kind of way we expect engineers to think, which is the solving of problems with known knowledge, as distinct from science, which is the discovery of new knowledge. And uh, by doing this kind of design activity, they begin to understand the way in which they'll be expected to think when they become professionals later on. And really people can use the, those kinds of thinking skills without very much knowledge of engineering. They simply need uh, to have a, a task and to follow through with it and then they understand the process. I reckon this course is really good. It sort of teaches you, I don't know, so far I've really learned. Yeah. It teaches you the way it should be done and the, way, the best way to get like, yeah. the problem solved and how you've got to plan it. And it's well, practical as well, so yeah, yeah. it's not like just reading a book, it's the actually hands-on group work. It sort of teaches you things that you do instinctively, except it teaches yeah, yeah. you them to sort of break them up and work them all out so that everything's much more efficient and effective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and group work as well. Because yeah. yeah. like, it, when it's formalised like that, then everyone's on the same, on the same level. I just don't feel like getting out of the class. Because, yeah, it's really good. I found it very difficult to find information on this course. Just because it's a new course, there's no one who's done it before, no one can say this is what it's going to be like. It's sort of a, yeah, it's very, as you say, flying by the seat of your pants. Is that good? Um, no. I, I, <laughs> I, would, I definitely prefer to, you know, have somebody who could you know, give me some advice about yeah. some of the stuff that we're going to be dealing with. Yeah, some it's of the true. Obstacles. A lot of people don't know what's happening, like, with this course. It's yeah. just been everywhere. For time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough time. Like, oh, maybe yeah. for us, but... I know, I had a two-hour lecture this morning at drag, but this class just whizzes by. It's just yeah. really quick. Yeah. Which is good in a while, but... Mm. 
Good or bad? <laughs> Not when you feel that you didn't really get enough time to get the work done. I have a class that clashes with the lecture and it's just, it just makes no sense. I don't think you're alone there. I know that the directors of this program, they know there's problems, but uh, I haven't been able to get a clear idea of what my timetable is supposed to look like because there's all different options. So that's the only thing I'm having a problem with at the moment, but should clear up in the next few weeks.